Before we get into the video, I just want to apologize that I have no idea how to pronounce their names and Google Translate did not help me. So I just basically said how I read them, some of them at least, but I tried my best. What's up guys, I'm really excited for this review and I hope this video will get you to read Lily by Yi Yi or Pika Pika. Yes, that is the author's name, it's like why, why, so I pronounce it Yi Yi. Although the manhwa is a little hard to find, I will provide some links and maybe some instructions on the description below to make it easy for you. Yes, it's supposed to be a manga review, but it's my video, so what are you gonna do about it? And yes, Lily is another Yuri manhwa. The only explanation I can give you is this recreation of Shoe on Head's video. Anyways, let's begin. Lily is a slice of life manhwa that simply has an amazing storyline, great characters, conception of female to female relationships, and difficulties of being young and in love, especially in a place like... Yeah... The story isn't too plot twisty or vast world buildy. It's simply a love story between Yilin Fan, a shy but kind hearted high school student who meets Roxy Lan, a tomboy that works at the cafe they met who coincidentally goes to the same school as she does. Throughout the story, they get closer and closer to each other with Lin realizing she has feelings for Roxy. They go through a lot together with their friends Ziyun Shu, Fan Gao, and Xiao. J Dai? Ziyun is Lin's best friend and the one who introduced Lin to Rokshi. Fan Gao is Rokshi's childhood brother like best friend, and Dai is a rich former delinquent who turned a new leaf after Rokshi beat the gang she was in. One of their adventures involved starring in a school play for the Frog Prince, with Lin being the princess and Rokshi being the prince. I kinda wish they kept some of the production crew as side characters so Fan Gao at least has a guy friend. I thought they were gonna stay since some of them went to the hot spring trip. Speaking of which, due to them winning the school competition and Dai also developing feelings for Roxy, they got to go on a hot spring trip with Dai paying for the food. There's actually a bit where Fan Gao gets lost and someone on the intercoms is like, we're looking for a missing boy, your sister is waiting at this location, which was really funny for me. It's also cause of Dai that they got to experience a food festival where Lin finally confirmed to herself that she is in love with Roxy. Unfortunately, Dai becomes an on and off character after she found out that Roxy clearly likes Lin and not her. She does become sort of a push for Lin to finally admit that she has feelings for Roxy by the near end of season 1. Lin meets a creepy ass scumbag named Senlu who only wanted her for her body after quote unquote watching the play. Thank God in the cast that Roxy made it in time to save her and give him a good ass beating. The next topic is a bit heavy for some people so please skip to the timestamp that will be on the screen if you can handle sexual topics. It's a little serious conversation. There is a part of the series where people questioned why they didn't report the attempted rape. And for someone who came from an Asian country, as far as I can tell, usually things like that and domestic violence are sorta of taboo for some reason. It has been 11 years since I've been in Asia, so all I can hope is that it got a lot better. The only reason why I'm, why I'm addressing this part of the story is because it becomes a pivotal moment for both characters. Lin does suffer from this experience for a little bit but I bet that her trauma would be more prominent if it actually happened. Lin is just too kind to generate instincts like Roxy who knew from the beginning that Sen Lu had inhumane motives. Even his name in some translations means death road. The boxing competition that Roxy has been training tooth and nail for has finally come up and she loses her first round due to her thoughts being elsewhere. After a pep talk from Lin, Roxy won first place but Lin still feels the looming concern for Roxy. She soon finds out from Fan Gao that Roxy suffers from her brother's death. She also found out that the only reason why Roxy was always training for boxing is to follow in her older brother's footsteps. 
Lin visits Rokshi to check up on her and for the first time Rokshi cries in front of someone. With this, Lin's understanding of Rokshi broadens. So this is actually one of my favorite moments of the series. Not only did we get a vulnerable version of Rokshi, but we get a plot twist. And the plot twist is her brother has passed away because the whole entire time that she's been talking about him, it was pretty much, she pretty much gives you the vibe that he just ran away from home. Chen Yayi or Pinky is a friend of Roxy who helped her navigate her way during her time in Canada. Because of her, Lin started doubting herself and while she's not necessarily a bad person, she does admit that she also has feelings for Roxy too. There was never a tension between them, Lin just started doubting herself because Pinky made a rumor that she got dumped by Roxy. But this is where Dai encourages Lin to finally tell Roxy how she feels and with a kiss, bada bim bada boom butterflies baby it becomes clear to roxy how lin feels and they even made a promise to go to the same college once they've graduated high school but unfortunately no matter how hard roxy fought her parents she was forced to go back to canada to finish her last year there a year passes by and everyone does their own thing and as for Lin, she'd write letters to Rokshi about what's been happening and how everyone is doing. She also mentions that she'll be attending college. Once there, someone calls her out for her beautiful body and as she turns around, to her surprise, it was Rokshi. They embrace each other and the story ends. For season 1 at least. Yes, the series was loved by so many fans that it got a season 2. Which I'm still reading. Season 1 has about 488 chapters and season 2 has 431. But don't worry about the length since each chapter pretty much only has like less than 10 pages. I really like how it gave me the suspense I used to feel watching C dramas like Meet Your Garden. No, not the reboot. Or K dramas like The Baker King. It gave me the feel good moments. It's all about the feels, baby. It's also noticeable how the illustration gets better and better throughout the whole series. I'm about 35 chapters in on season 2 and it clearly shows that they have grown a bit, even though it's only been like a year or two. I'm really excited to get into season 2. They're in college, they're together, they're in love and I can't see what's gonna happen next. My words simply cannot express the greatness of this manhwa so go and give it a try. Just like Pulse, I really really hope that Seven Seas Entertainment picks it up to publish physical copies so I can collect them and support the creator. That's something that a lot of people should do but there's only online releases on third party websites and some people that translate it in English wants you to pay for Patreon which I think it's unfair because they pretty much gain 100% of the revenue for, something, for someone else's work. If you liked the video, hit that thumbs up button and subscribe for more. Or not. I'm not your boss. But please do subscribe. Peace!